Hi, dear people. Um, this is technically Laber Reviews, which is usually in German. But uh, the circumstances, uh, this time it's in English, uh, because I uh, brought a friend with me. Uh, currently, I'm currently in America, as you already know from my Venom review. And um, uh, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Bennett. Um, I am I am the American friend who does not speak German, so congratulations, you get me tonight. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, some of you might know her from my podcast, we did an episode together, and um, I chose to visit her, and now we are at her place, and we uh, went and saw a movie together, and we will do the same thing tomorrow, and um, yeah, I'm really sorry to all of my German viewers, this time it's gonna be in English, but I think you're gonna grasp what this is all about, and this is actually something very interesting for me to to do, because it's, it's the first time I did, I, I'm doing this in front of a camera, so, um, and I'm not even, I'm not even sure what I should call this, maybe like chatty reviews, <laughs> just chatty reviews as a, yeah, I think, I think that's about right. I like it. Um, so, what movie did we watch? So we watched Bad Times at the El Royale with Jeff Bridges and Cynthia Erivo. Yeah. And, also uh, Dakota Johnson. And Dakota in Johnson, it. John Hamm. Oh, oh, Chris Hemsworth. Oh, how I how could I forget Chris Hemsworth? Oh my God! How can anybody forget? How can anybody Chris forget the 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 abs? The uh, they're there, <laughs> ladies. If that's what you're or gentlemen, if that's what you're looking for. They're there. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's. Yeah, I think he's more shirtless in this one than all three, four movies combined. I mean, it's an open shirt. He apparently just does not believe in buttoning his shirt no. in this movie. No, I think he, he's wearing the same shirt throughout the whole movie. I think he is. Because when it's not buttoned, you don't need to change your shirt. It's basically just a blanket. That's true. That's true. <laughs> this is one of those movies it's really hard to talk about without spoiling. We will do our best because this is honestly a movie you need to go and see. And it... It hasn't the highest numbers, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of bombing right now. And I guess that has something to do with the fact that this isn't based on anything. <laughs> it's not, and that's part of what makes it so much fun. So this is set in 1970, so it's a bit of a period piece, which works in its favor. There are certain plot elements that you could not pull off in a modern setting. You no. would not get away with it. Mm -hmm. So it relies on that setting in a big way, which is excellent pulls in a lot of different like thriller types of tropes yeah without being too predictable i think yeah yeah that's a good way of putting it it's basically it takes place at the air royale which is a hotel that's exactly on the border between uh, uh california and what was the other nevada one? nevada yeah uh, it's it's just exactly um Right down the middle, you did state line as part of the yeah. design, which was really cute. It's really, it's really good. Like, and, and I was, I was thinking, is this a real hotel that exists? Because I was wondering. Because yeah, of like, it seems like something somebody would do somewhere. Yeah. Whether it's California, Nevada line, it seems like that's something somebody's done. This is a great gimmick. Yeah. This is it, and, and Americans love this stuff, and oh, it's yeah. just. Um, <laughs> and we we have these couple of characters who who go into that uh, hotel. Mo it's, it's a motel basically mm -hmm. um, and um, we we meet all of them and uh, they we seem to know what they're up to and then along the way we discover what everybody is actually planning except for one certain character who just actually is gets caught up into this all by accident and I I I was watching this and I figured out a good way to describe this movie without spoiling it this is Psycho, as directed by Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, yeah, I would go with that. I associate Quentin Tarantino um, with actually even more blood yeah. than was in this. This is rated R. Yeah. There are reasons. Yeah, I mean, but compared to Tarantino, this is pretty tame. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I feel like if Tarantino were trying to go for a Hitchcock thing... Yes! Then, then yeah, yeah. I think that's a good way to. There's, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on because if if you also like watching stuff like Bates Motel mm -hmm. and, and all of that stuff, and you're just into Psycho, this is actually a very interesting redoing of it without actually remaking it. It's yeah. just the basic the basic setup is just the same. Mm -hmm. But it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting in a way that we switch between different characters 
and it takes place, and this is something very Tarantino-like, how it switches between time frames. Mm -hmm. And we go back in time, we go forward in time every now and then, it's never confusing. Uh, it's written and directed by uh, Drew Goddard, who most of you, I think, know from uh, Cabin in the Woods, which he co-wrote uh, with Joss Whedon. And um, this is uh, just, and I think this is just actually the second movie I've seen he's directed. I'm sure he's directed some stuff else. Um, I think, didn't he also direct um, Cloverfield, the first Cloverfield? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty sure, but um, this is just, from the very beginning on, I was like, this is a masterful made movie. Yeah. Just, like, it's, it's, the edits are amazing. Like, it's, it's very, very well edited, the, the shots are great. Like, it's all a lot of long takes, yeah. a lot of just... Uh, lockdown shots which make you feel both claustrophobic and kind of like feel like the observer mm -hmm. it's very very well done like it's uh, it's 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 really amazing how they how they did and this is actually the, the um this is the, the cinematographer of the first avengers movie and he also worked mm -hmm. with dakota johnson because he shot the first 50 shades of gray yes which dakota johnson 50 shades was the only thing that i'd seen her in and by seeing her in, I mean I'd watched about five minutes of the movie. Um, <laughs> but I now know from watching that that she's not a bad actress. No, and I didn't think she was a bad actress from seeing her in the Fifty Shades movies, because she is really good in those. Like, she is really funny in that and really charismatic. It's just terrible it's, script. Yeah, terrible script, and terrible you can writing. Tell, and you can tell from movie to movie that she hates being there. Yeah. She's... she's She's not quite good at hiding that fact, but it really works. It works in the favor of the audience. And yeah. um, I, I've seen her in some other stuff. I mean, she's also doing the Suspiria remake, which we got a trailer for, mm -hmm. which actually looks kind of creepy. But uh, she is... No, no, she's really good in this. And I mean, I always knew that she had some range. And in this, she just shows it all off. And she's yeah. re she's really good. All of the cast is really good. Even some of the more, more smaller names. For example, um, uh, the girl she's with, eventually. Mm -hmm. And I saw her just this year in the new Pacific Rim. Oh, really? She was really good in that, too. And I was like, wow, this, she's really good. Like, I hope she goes places. And this is just, you know, this is, this is a great step up, too. It's, it's, very, it's very dramatic. I mean, it, it's a movie that's taking place in the 70s. So, so it's playing around with the setting. It's playing around with the themes that are going on there. Yeah. And they do a good job setting up the time, setting up the time frame by showing some stuff on TV, mm -hmm. by the music they're playing, of course. They never specifically state the year, I think. You just No, can't... not in the film. Um, no, you I can think tell it from the... Uh, if, how... if, you, if you know the things that Nixon said at certain times, you would know mm -hmm. right away that it's 1970. Um, but unless you're incredibly versed with Nixon's speeches, you just know, oh, it's Nixon era. I'm and sure that's that... all we really need to know. I'm sure there's some experts out there. Oh, probably. Really there's there's know. probably somebody who's like, well, actually, that speech came out in, you know, yeah. <laughs> 30 oh, days after this was supposed to be set. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, God. But there's another, there's another Tarantino trope I noticed, which reminded me of Pulp Fiction, because there's, without spoiling anything, there's a certain thing, we never quite know what it is. Mm -hmm. Just like the suitcase in Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. they, this is a very clever homage doing this, and I was kind of, at the end, I was kind of like frustrated, like, ah, it, but, but at the same time, if it revealed it, it would have been, it probably well, would have been disappointing. It would have been, yeah, either too much or a disappointment, and I'm kind of with one of the characters states that they don't care what's on the tape for their own reasons, and I kind of side with that character on that. I really don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of the story, right? Yeah, it, because... I didn't need it to for the movie to feel complete. It has closure. It has a clear, defined ending. There's no cliffhanger that's, you know, oh, you're gonna wait for the sequel to find oh, no, that out. No, no, no. They don't not, do that no. to you, which I loved. Thank yeah, you, yeah. finally. This is a standalone, very well done movie. Yeah. Um, because at, at the very beginning, you kind of think what the characters are about, and then you figure out with some, oh, this is actually about this stuff. And that, that immediately, like, characters who start off kind of unsympathetically mm -hmm. grow on you, yeah. and vice versa. Like some of the characters, and then they come back again. Mm -hmm. It's really great. The only, the only person whoever it is, is is with her, is with a singer. Like mm -hmm. the, that's the only person who pretty much all the way through uh, is, is the most sympathetic person. Yeah, right? that's that's your straight player, which I appreciated. You didn't have to 
everybody second, you know, double and triple guess, try to figure out what their motives are. You do have one character that you follow and that you stay with and for the most part. They're yeah. through the whole movie and that's 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 almost the POV character. Yeah, in a way, because we also like I think she's the first person we see driving up to the hotel. I think she is, yeah. And so she's pretty much our point of view character for quite a long time and then it switches and we are like ah this is what it's all about also like every time it shows the kind of like the screen that tells us like room four room yeah, seven, yeah. It always it always changes the frame mm -hmm. like, like, like the frame is changed uh, depending on what happens and what this is about yeah it's really really interesting and sometimes they switch to character i didn't even think about like wow now it's about this guy yeah nice. like it's really really interesting how they do it and it's like i said it's never confusing it's no, they're very, very clear about when they're switching POVs, when they're going into a flashback. It's very, very obvious. Sometimes they'll say, like, five years ago, but they don't always have to. There's, like, a couple times... Yeah, but I think I think they do with, like, the singer. They say, oh, five years ago, or whatever it was. I think it was... Yeah, I think it was a... Her? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they obviously do it with uh, with Jeff Bridges' character yeah. at one point, but it's but it's very. Uh, but they do it at the very beginning when it just says like ten years later. Yeah, which is one thing I have a gripe with in this movie. This movie freaking wastes Nick Offerman <laughs> because you, you see him at the very beginning and then you see him later, but he's all like masked up, and I'm like, this is just yeah no yeah. No. This is what, this is something. Sorry, but I I just love Nick Offerman. I just this is something I was really disappointed by. Uh, did, I didn't even know he was in this uh, before you looked the uh, before you looked the movie up uh, b before we watched it, and I was like, oh, Nick Offerman, nice, and then ah, shouldn't have, because then I, I would have been like, the first scene is that Nick Offerman? It's just nah. And yeah, I did. Makes no never mind to me with him, so I was just like, oh, okay. I was more looking through the whole movie going, who's going to creep me out? Somebody is going to creep me out in this movie. Yeah, Jesus, like, okay. I it was... turned out not to be the person I thought it was going to be, so keep that in it. mind. No, I knew it from the very beginning because in, in the trailer, they, the trailer does a really good job kind of telling you the concept of the movie, but not really what's what it's about. Mm -hmm. It shows you all the characters, it shows you the setting, mm. and some of the, like, voyeuristic stuff. Because uh, also, it doesn't take long to realize this hotel has something very, very fucked up going on there. And the way they do it is also very interesting because it's always... They, they, they don't really show who's responsible. They don't really show the whole purpose of it all. Mm -mm. They just state at certain points, this is kind of like what this hotel is. And it's so incredibly creepy. The, the thing he tells... The thing that Miles tells mm -hmm. uh, about stuff that has been going on in those rooms. That was like, for me, that was like oh, the creepiest scene. Oh, so, some, of, some of that was a little too much, wow, I gotta but, say. But it's so great that we don't see that. No, yeah, him, I did not want to see it. That was a tell-don't-show moment. Oh, yeah, that's don't him telling show it. that. That's amazing. It's really good. And, uh, and it worked for his character, too, and yeah. what you know of him and the circumstances that he's in. Yeah, and this is one of those movies that... And I love these kind of movies, which suddenly and out of nowhere get incredibly violent. Like this is a, this was this was almost a jump scare movie. It was like it, it's so it's so well set up and well done. Like there are certain points where just those bursts of violence. Just oh, you know it's coming too, but it still get gets you. you. No, with the one oh. with the one thing, what happens? What happens in the lobby? Oh that, yeah, that, that is something. That, this is one of one of the first things that happens. That totally, like, we that just... That got the entire theater, I we think. Jumped. Everyone went, ah! We this was a very small theater. We it was a very small theater, there. not many people in it, but still, I was. this was actually one of the more active audiences that I've been in in a while. Um, as far as people gasping and, you know, laughing or I realize at that, certain moments. Like I said, I've seen Venom a few weeks ago, so that yeah. was just like... like people fanboying all over oh, the yeah, place. Oh, yeah, no, so. and, like, for <laughs> something that has no fan base because it's completely original, I was not expecting any audience reactions or, you know, participation, so to speak, at all, and it still happened. Yeah, so, yeah. So, that was pretty good. Yeah, it, it was. It, it totally was. It, there was... There's something else about it. Like, the, the music is really good. Like, uh... Yes. Be Benson. Uh. Benson Ferris, we talked about this. You told me that you didn't like the score. I... 
understand it because you didn't see it in context. In context, this is beautiful music. Oh, this it's is gorgeous. Really well done. It's so suspenseful, and there's also some very, very heart wrenching stuff at, near the end. Yeah. Like with piano and, 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 and singing and everything. Yeah. It's just. Cynthia does a gorgeous job with the singing. She does do her own singing. She's a Broadway actress. Because I, I wasn't familiar with her, I was like, do I know her? And she does so much singing in this movie. So much. I was like, she has to be somebody. Like, either she is just a talented actress and singer, or she used to be a singer. I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's, she's a Broadway-trained actress, and she, she does such a good job, and they, the camera just holds on her oh, and while she's doing all gorgeous. of this. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, we have to talk accents. <laughs> because I was I was really glad I had her with me. Because from the very beginning on I was kind of like I was kind of like because John Hamm does this accent in yeah. the movie. Yeah. Oh, I was like I, I was leaning over there, what is this accent he's doing? Like, so he was doing so John Hamm plays a uh, uh, a, va a vacuum salesman mm -hmm. in the you know traveling vacuum salesman in the 1970s so all us Americans know what that sounds like he's oh he's from Biloxi Mississippi and I can't even do the voice but there's this very there's this very salesman voice yeah where he's definitely trying to you know seem like he's very important and oh he knows best and by golly you know this vacuum's just gonna be the best thing in your life so it's a bit of that like mid-atlantic thing um, that we got a lot from especially radio personalities um you know news hosts things like that in in about that time frame it's similar where you're not quite supposed to be able to place the accent but he does put just that tiny bit of a southern twist on the end yeah he, that, that's something he's from biloxi mississippi and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> that's something that of course totally gets lost with german dubbing yeah so i was yeah. like I, I was really glad that i was watching it in english and uh but it was it was Kind of like, I mean, I'm kind of used to Jeff Bridges doing that type of voice, but somehow... Yeah, it's, it's, it's Jeff Bridges' voice. It, it's Jeff Bridges' voice. He's not doing quite that, that, that cowboy accent he no. did for like the couple, the, the past like five, eight years. <laughs> because it's like, please, can you stop doing that? Yeah, can you pick he, other roles? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just a Jeff Bridges' voice. It's pretty much Jeff Bridges' voice, but it's like, so sometimes it was, it was kind of... I thought we were a little bit true. Yeah, you can barely understand what I'm saying. It's really easy to imitate, but um, but yeah, but but he he's he's really good too. This is some mm -hmm. this is uh, this role has some range as well, and yeah. all of the roles because you find out so much about these characters. And then I, I, we have to talk about Chris Hemsworth uh. <laughs> because um, he's the, he's by far the creepiest oh. thing in this movie. Oh yes. Oh, you you think. I see you. You think Chris Hemsworth can't be creepy. You're I've wrong. never I've never seen him play a bad guy. Maybe he has. I, I haven't don't know. seen him play one either, but I also don't necessarily go looking for him. So I think I, I think I've seen most movies he's in. I mean I've I've seen movies where he hasn't been a big star yet. I mean the yeah. first the first Star Trek yeah. he did. <laughs> where he plays Kirk's father, you know, you see that movie now Chris, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> Chris is Chris's father. Yeah. We also you also got a trailer for a Chris Pine movie. Yes, we also or, or got a show. The, the, or there were so many Chris's tonight. Yeah, but uh, and he uh, he does that, uh, and he's I, I've seen him do this a couple of times. Whenever he has to do an accent that's not his, it's it's kind of like it, it, it starts sounding like authentic, and then a couple of minutes in, he just lets it go. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and it slips a into his normal, bit. and then it comes back again. <laughs> I think it's just so weird. I, I've seen him do this in, um, what was it, um, in the heart of the sea, where it's just like, sometimes it's like, sometimes he sounds like he's Irish, and then he sounds like he's from Boston, and then it's just <laughs> all the time, like constantly switching. This is, was pretty much a switch of his regular accent, and then this kind of American stuff, and then sometimes it even sounded British, vaguely British. A little British. bit, a little bit. It oh, was, God. and for me, it didn't bother me because it wasn't so jarring where it's like oh now he now he's suddenly Australian you know you, yeah, you no, didn't there was one point where it took me out just one yeah there is a little bit but the character is also so inconsistent yeah but, and and on purpose on yeah, purpose it's, I think it fits yeah he see he turns up very very late in in, in his first scene they're kind of hiding him because it's like the sun is right behind yeah. him and you can tell it's him 
but it's I, I knew it was him right away. Yeah. But they, they they take their time of introducing it and then the, pretty much the last act is all his show. Yeah. And he is so incredibly creepy in this. Oh. It's, it's oh. just I've never seen him do this. It, this is just him letting loose. Like Oh my god, she, no, there's she, there's she totally over. a scene that if that is in the script, I will eat my hat. I will buy a hat and I will eat it. Because that looks completely like someone just let the camera run on Chris Hemsworth. It's just First, of, it, it's the scene where they start playing Hush, and first of all, I'm down for any movie that's playing Hush. Like, <laughs> I love that song so much, and yes. so I was like, uh, I, I was totally like, oh yeah, what's this gonna be? And it's one of the best scenes in a movie, but the whole runtime of a song, is, it's, it's yeah. really great. And this is one of the movies where I really can't tell who's gonna live, who's gonna die. Yeah, like, no, it's... Anybody. Yee. Freaking anybody, and it's like... No contractual immortality, we don't have a sequel coming, we don't yeah. have to save anybody. People who you, you, who you don't expect it from, you know, they, they, they turn up as, as heroes all of a sudden, or mm -hmm. vice versa, like, it's, it's very, very, very interesting, and, like, all the performances, and they, they constantly pull, like, backstory out, and it's never jarring, it's like, oh wow, this character has this kind of yeah. backstory, you, you don't expect it, this is, finally, this is one of those movies where you really don't expect what's gonna happen in it, it's just, you're in, you're in for the ride, and you're interested in, oh, where it's going next, and, and all the time, and I think, um, I think it, it felt like, for, for, for two hours, like, 18 minutes, it actually felt quite long, sometimes, but it's like... There, there were a couple of little, little plotty spots, but... Like and then then you get then you get into that final act and it's yeah. just like, kind of like oh in, <laughs> kind of like in the second act there's some stuff where it kind of feels a little bit draggy but just a little bit but they do it so good like setting they, up they the have atmosphere to, like the way that they do certain things and having to show things yeah. over and so over so clever and yeah. so like so well edited it's actually kind of like in, in Baby Driver sometimes how they edit it to the music yes uh, there's some several times yeah, there, I know there's some do that there's some great sequences in this and um, it just makes you smile yeah and you're, you're just constantly thinking like what is this hotel all about like what what is this all about and it's great that you never quite get the whole solution it's just uh, it, it, it just you can make it up in your head like mm -hmm. who who did this who is responsible for this whose idea was this and and uh, it's kind of like the movie yeah whose yeah, idea was this we don't know this because is, it's not based on anything this is a this is a movie written and directed by one person and it's just this is freaking rare like good I mean like, uh, besides from Quentin Tarantino stuff or anything yeah. like this is like you don't get this kind of movie very often it's it's sad but you know. I mean, we always praise, like, yeah, more original stuff and things like that. And I think this is actually kind of like, this is kind of like uh, sinking. I mean, this is kind of like going under between between audiences because yeah. it's just, I mean, it's it's, it's shown right, right when the new Halloween comes out. And there was kind of like a line for that. I yeah, was, no, they, they were yelling out that there were very few tickets to Halloween left yeah. to go around. And we were like, well, that's they, not what we're seeing. Yeah, they had it in the biggest auditorium, too, I yeah. think. But yeah, but it was it was kind of frustrating, you know, because this is actually this is a great movie to to see a, around Halloween. Or, no, um, this this is a great Halloween flick. If you're not into it's not even like the about slasher Halloween. movies, or this is more of a psychological thriller. It's a little more Hitchcockian. Yeah, it said. actually it's actually it actually is. This is, this has the spirit of Hitchcock all over. Yeah. it. Yeah, like some some of the music sounds like it. The, uh, the the setting, like I said, reminded me of Psycho sometimes, and mm -hmm. just the way it's. The way it's shot, and it's such it's such a rich film, and the, the edits are just so well done, and it it has this great pacing. And um, I just recently watched a retrospective on Psycho, and that was when I was kind of like, maybe I should finally try Bates Motel. And mm -hmm. I've I've binged the first season in like two days, where I was like, wow, this is really good. And I'm uh, currently watching the second one, and it's just this is a really like, and I think we managed to to, to get through it to. Why not really spoiling anything? Like this is let let me tell you let let us tell you this is this is a really well done, incredibly well acted movie. Yes. Which takes its time deliberately, and um, just shows you some, basically is there to to entertain you. And I mean it has it has this very dark, wicked sense of humor about it. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not it's not as overt as a Quentin Tarantino flick, you know, right, you, you right. can tell that this is, this is something that, that, that pulls back, that uh, lets you 
draw your own conclusions too and uh, it, it doesn't it's not as violent as a Tarantino a movie I mean it's it's and I think that's why and also it's not yeah. as vulgar as a Tarantino movie no it's really, not not by a long when, shot when, whenever the violence hits and whenever they curse it's so well placed yeah like, it never gets old yeah which is really good because there are certain movies where it's kind of like okay can you can you stop dropping f bombs now it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of getting boring oh you you wouldn't like me at work then yeah but but, but this is <laughs> but I'm not a movie so I don't care <laughs> but I'm this not even for a rating this is like it's always so well done when just John Hamm out of nowhere like, be my fucking guest you know yeah. it's just really really good <laughs> well fuck you too I guess yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it, it's it's so well done like um, before we get into the trailers and stuff like let let it. This is a movie you need to go see, yes, no matter where the theater, you are. Yeah, in the theater. Don't don't wait for this to come out on DVD. Like it'll be fun as yeah. a home watch. It's like, oh, definitely yeah. rewatchable. Yeah, watch it with a group of people. Watch it with a group. Watch it in a theater. It's a lot of fun in the theater because oh, they yeah. they're definitely playing with the surround sound as well. Yes. I usually don't notice in a movie when they use the proximity effect. Mm -hmm. You know, some you know sometimes it's like oh yeah the explosions over here or yeah, you know so somebody's yelling right there but no like. It's important that this knocking sound is coming from back here also, the, the, and the not storm, up here. The storm going on outside, oh, it, it, that, yeah. remind, that reminded me of stuff like Krampus and also, yeah. like, what was it, um, uh, The Hateful Eight, yeah, when, when it's just constantly wind going around this hut. Yeah. And it's, it's just, this is similar in a way. It, it's, it's, it's really, and I don't really, when I say this reminds me of a Tarantino movie, I mean that as the biggest compliment. Like, I don't mean it like, oh, this is a knockoff or anything. No, no, no. no, it's, no, no. It manages to be its, its own thing. It's just kind of comparable to, to some of the stylistics. But it's just, it's... I was thinking while I was watching, is this based on a book or maybe like even like a graphic novel? It, mm -hmm. has, had, it has that feel, but no. Yeah. No. It's, it's so character driven. Yeah. And I think that's this film's, like, I think that's what really made me like it, was that we pick up, like, you've got your main cast, and you learn about every single one of those characters. Yeah. There's nobody who's like really swept under the rug that, you know, is things, you know, is one dimensional or even two dimensional. Everybody's got, everybody's got a whole story. You may have to wait till the end or nearly the end mm -hmm. to get everything, but you'll get everything. Yeah. And you will have characters that you like and dislike, and it's not gonna be because they're a bad character, it's gonna be because they're a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this are really, they introduce some very, very uh, messed up concepts in this. I mean, it's not. They do. It's really do. not not a movie for like people who have like I don't know for, for for people who are like easily very, very disturbed and scared and stuff like that. Because it's this is not a horror flick. It's just a very, very tense movie. Yeah, it's psychologically it touches on some. Uh, so there there would be a trigger warning in here for somebody who's been an abuse victim. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, um, both physical and psychological abuse. So that one there, but it's handled. It's handled literally as part of the plot. It's handled part of the plot. And it's handled also tastefully. You know? Yeah, as tasteful as you're, you can do you're that. You're not showing really people getting the crap no. beat out of it's them never to, to do it. There's there's no sexual violence against women. No. So I mean, there's, there's, no no boobs just to like you know no no ripping people's clothes off just to show boobs. Yeah right, I, but it's always implied. I think there were some boobs walking through the field at just one point. Just that one shot. Yeah. Yeah, just that one shot. I I think there was just a woman who happened to have her top off. Yeah, so that's it. Like, that was it. But, but that's really it. Yeah. Yeah. No nobody getting thrown down and you know nope no nope. no 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 it is really always appreciated like, that it might be part of one certain character's backstory but yeah. it's always it, it's always kind of like also left to your imagination which which immediately makes it more creepy this is this is actually funny taking place in the 70s because the 70s was the era where you had just all of those horrible tasteless rape revenge flicks yeah no but it's like the 70s yeah. were such an awful time for movies <laughs> For the most part. The 70s were such an awful time for a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. But like for uh, movies, it's like, you know, all of that, all of that, uh, kind of like, maybe like American rage that came like from the Vietnam uh, yeah. war and everything. That was uh, kind of like going into the movies where it's sort of like just people who really had personal problems. Yeah. Put those problems into movies and it's just, it's horrible. Like if, if you don't know anything about the time period and, and movies, like look it up. Like you will have nightmares. <laughs> yeah. 
we, so when, we did some shit. Yeah, so it's really good that they pick that time frame. It's kind of like an interesting, an interesting commentary on it without going too meta, in a way. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But it's really. <laughs> but this movie, you yeah. can read things into without feeling like you're having to justify the movie's existence. Mm -hmm. Like. We're not sitting here theorizing about this because the movie has just failed to explain itself no. or didn't even tell an interesting story to start with. No, the movie tells an interesting story. Yeah. And it leaves just an it just leaves just the right things for you to speculate on, not yeah. the wrong yeah, things. That's cool. Okay, um uh, final thoughts before we go into the trailers. Um we really recommend this highly. Go yes. go see this no matter where you are. It's worth your time. It's worth your money. It's one of the better movies I've seen this year so far. Um, it's it's really and that's so late, you know, just yeah. in October. It's it's really it's a con if I would do top tens anymore, which I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, that would this would be up there in the top ten for me yeah. so far. It's and there are some really great movies I'm looking forward to. Well, I hope they're great at least. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really looking forward to it. This is actually. I, I, I saw the trailer once, and I was like, this looks interesting. I think I saw the trailer in front of, like, maybe it was, like, The Predator or something. I never knew anything about this movie yeah. until I saw it on we, the don't cinema, look, and I'm like, I mean, we, sure. we, we told you some stuff about the plot, but actually, don't even, if you don't know anything about this movie, don't, don't, you don't, don't even watch the it. trailer. No. Don't, don't watch the don't trailer. Watch the don't trailer. anything up. Just, just it's great going it. into it without knowing <laughs> very much. I mean, I, we, we, we told you some stuff, but it's really... That's all you need to know. Yeah, now that's go really watch all you movie. need to know. Really, go watch a movie. It's, <laughs> it, it's, you're gonna have a great time. It's, it's a really, really good movie, and it's not a downer. You know? No, it's, it's actually, not. It's, it's a satisfying a... conclusion. You will not feel depressed walking out no, of no, there. No. You're, you will, you will As walk somebody out of there with depression. With a wicked smile on your face. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, oh, it was, it was a oh, well, ton of fun. Totally. Let's talk trainers now. What did we uh, get? The first that came to mind was... Girl in the Spider Web? Or yeah, Girl in the Spider's Web was, I think, the first trailer up. What? So. Is that ba because I've, I've seen the original three movies based on the Girl of the Dragon Tattoo stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Millennium Trilogy as it's known to. And I've seen the American remake by David Fincher, and I was like, well, eh, fine movies, all of so far, but I'm, I'm not sure if this movie is based on some of those books I've seen the movies from, or if this is an entirely new book because of the same character. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard the title The Girl in the Spider's Web, but that doesn't mean much because I haven't read those books. I think I saw like 20 minutes of the American version of mm -hmm. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and I was like, ooh, that that's a little much that's for an me. That's an uncomfortable movie, yeah. deliberately so, but yeah, yeah it's, it's and not a movie you want to see with other people too, it's just... <laughs> no, no, and as a as a survivor of sexual abuse, I was like, nope, no thank you, goodbye. That was not, that was yeah, not for me. It's really, yeah, uh, and then, I mean, I've, because I've, I've, I've seen the other two movies, I was like, is this based on one of those books? Because it's just, I don't remember anything about this. This is basically they advertise it as an action thriller. Yeah. This is this is so many action shots in it. They they, they spoil a huge plot point in my opinion. Yeah. Because it's like they they reveal this character and what uh, what she's up to, and it's like oh, this seems like something you should have kept hidden. Yeah. So I, I don't, don't know. That, to me, that says that. Either their uh, department, their uh, media department, is not very savvy, or they've got something bigger hidden, and they better have something bigger hidden. Because otherwise, it's it's a well done trailer. In my it's a opinion. real nice looking trailer, and it it's looks well like edited. it's it it leads into what is probably a very satisfying movie for a certain type of audience, and by a certain type of audience, I mean angry people. <laughs> I probably I probably won't go see it because I don't care that much because it's like I, I, I've heard them having talks like uh, doing another book mm -hmm. uh, because it's like yeah the first one was maybe David Fincher but you know he's he's known for like yeah doing this movie and then moving on to another mm -hmm. project um, and I was like because this is totally in, a totally new cast it's not Rooney Mara anymore it's uh, it's Claire Foy who I really like she's mm -hmm. a really good actress I discovered her through a season of The Witch and she, she's really good in that, and a lot of stuff I've seen her in, but this is just, um, and I mean, they, they, they kind of keep the aesthetic in a way, but kind it's, of. it's still, it, it's, it, looks like, it looks like something that's something just totally different, because it's... What, what it's reminding me of more than anything else is the continuation that they've done with the Bourne movies. So you oh. had the original Bourne trilogy, and now you have those Bourne spin-offs, 
Which, one, they had one born spin-off with Jeremy Renner. Then they, uh, Damon came back again. Yeah, and then Damon came back again, which is still a spin-off because there are only three born books that are written by Robert Ludlum. There yeah, are true. a ton of other born books that are written by other authors um, using the Ludlum brand. Yeah, I, I've, I've but only uh, three born books, which okay, that's okay. that's my own beef. I've, yeah, whatever. Because uh, like, I don't even know who directs this one. I mean, it looks like I don't it looks like it's a it's a well made movie. It's just I don't really care. Just it's, as, it's not uh, my fandom, so it's not something no, no, that's no. on my must watch list. No, either. I don't really care about it. Who knows how how that will do? What kind of reviews it will get? We had some other trailers. We had a, we had a ton of trailers in this, but there, the, there was this one is like. And I, I got that same trailer. Oh, Overlord, Overlord, Overlord. That was. Oh, I can see oh, problems boy. with this movie if they do oh, it wrong. Boy. So, Overlord. Um, they start billing it as just your stock World War II movie because we haven't had one of those in the last six months. Yeah, but and... it, was, it looked like it looked like a sequel to Dunkirk. In it a way. really did at the start, which I imagine was kind of their intent. I think they're trying to play off the success of Dunkirk. Because I was a watching bit. that, I was watching that, and I was going in my head. This was the first time I've seen the trailer. I've never heard anything about Me this, either. and I was like, I'm I'm sick to death of World War II movies in a way. You know what? I would have, and, and then they land. They, they land in, in some forest. Yeah, they, they crash they, land in France, basically. Yeah, and they drew some kind of setup. And then I was thinking in my head, you know what? I would, what I would really like to see in a movie, a bunch of World War Two soldiers getting trapped in a different kind of movie, like a really messed up horror movie. <laughs> That's what this is. That's literally what this is. Then it happened. Like, there's like crazy scientific experiments and shit, and here's where it could go so wrong, viewers. Okay. You got Nazis, you got uh, scientific experiments. Yeah. The one thing you cannot do is make those experiments on Jews. And if they do that... No, they won't do that. They they won't, to, me, to me in the trailer, it looks like it's a kind of experiment to create super soldiers. That's, that's what... I'm hoping for <laughs> it will it will do that like they, even if they you won't... do like the French peasantry that they're preying on because they're yeah. in France that would be okay but for the love of no no, no they won't better... do that Ooh. they won't do it it's produced Ooh. by JJ Abrams who's a very smart man when it comes both to advertising this is true. and also choosing the material he's doing this is something this will do this will do some stuff with like uh, failed super soldier experiments or anything it's a, it's a very tense trailer it's very it, it looks like it could be a ton of fun. Could be a ton of fun. It could also be very terrifying and a, a real downer in a way. Like yeah. It, it, could be, it could be all sorts of things. I'm kind could, of curious. It could be a rocks fall, everybody dies ending, honestly. That would be maybe some one I, some <laughs> I want to catch on DVD or something. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not quite sure I want to see that in the dark cinema because it looks <laughs> a little bit too, I don't know. I, I have some friends who would like to see that in a dark cinema. Yeah, we got no. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but that was that was actually something that really interested. It caught me like off guard. Wow, it's, it's kind of like the trailer read my mind. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the, it was absolutely hilarious just to see that progression <laughs> happen. Yeah, that was really good. What else? There were some other ones. There was. Uh, oh. I think we had for for that new. For a new show of, of Mad Men, but it was, it was uh, just, the Romanoffs, yeah, yeah the new the Romanoffs, the new show. Uh, it was pretty much a making off trailer, but no, yeah. we made some movies too. There, there was the the one with the um, the one with the dancers. Uh, for, uh, you mean Bohemian? Oh no, 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 no. Well, well, there was there, there was Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay, Rhapsody let, let's start talking yeah, about Bohemian let's Rhapsody. Yeah, let's talk Bohemian Rhapsody. That's oh. just one of those movies. You know, it could be a good movie. I just don't give a flying fuck about it. <laughs> just, it just, I... it looks like every freaking musician's biopic ever made. It looks well made. Yeah. It looks well acted. It's just, I don't care. Even though I like some songs, I just don't care about Queen. I don't <laughs> care about this. I'm sorry, this is just a movie that's not made for me, so I, I, I want no, to see. No, and I and have also... friends who this is made for, yeah. but the problem is... I believe this is the film that has caught some backlash for washing over what was a huge part of Freddie Mercury's life. At the very least, I know there is a biopic that did wash over the fact that he was a bisexual man with AIDS. But this, it, it looks like... In the, this in the trailer, does it's... look like... If this is the movie that I'm thinking of, it does look like they changed that. It looks like it's... I mean, it's hinted at... No, it's actually blatantly obvious in the yeah, trailer. Yeah, there's, there's points where he's talking about, yeah. you know, he doesn't have a ton of time left, so which is... It, 
I hope that it better be a reference so to so AIDS. I was like, so, so I was like, what is she even talking about? Like, yeah, this looks like it's addressing that. And, um, and you do see it, and they better show more than just this, because if this is all they put in the movie, that's not okay. Um, him in the room with a man and, you know, like, touching faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. But, and but I'm like, this mm -hmm. looks like it, it's, it's a part of a story, because this is, I, I've seen a different trailer we'll of this. We'll see. We'll see. I've it's seen it's on tra notice. Yeah, I've seen a different trailer of this where they didn't show any of that stuff, and so this one... So yeah, this maybe maybe they went overt. in and reshot or because this is isn't that the movie that also was directed by Brian Singer when he got caught up in oh, the, that me, could be and all the Me Too stuff uh -huh. and then and then somebody else and then somebody else took over but they still keep his name on it. I think that's that yeah, movie. Yeah, it might be. So it's like all like politically loaded and stuff like that, and it's like this is also one of those. One of those reasons, I'm like, I just don't care about, <laughs> about I mean, I, I care about the Me Too movement and stuff like that. This is something very important and very shocking, but it's a, but this is just one of those movies that caught up in that scandal and it's just, I am... It's, it's, uh, it's a movie that's on thin ice, so yeah. oh, um, God. we'll, it we'll was... see, because they do have certain expectations to live up to, and... Queen fans will let them know. Oh, this if is also screwed it up. <laughs> this is also one of this is also one of the one of the points where I don't want to see that movie because it looks to me like one of those failed Oscar bait movies, where they just where they are aiming for it but they don't quite reach it. Where it's like this looks like one of those movies where they're aiming for a release date, mm -hmm. you know, in November maybe like early December mm -hmm. where it's just you know this is the time where all the Oscar stuff comes out. Yeah. But it looks like one of those movies where it will get pushed back because the studio realizes it's actually not that good. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it's either going to be that or it's going to get pushed back because, oh my god, queer people. And it's like, no, 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 no. The man was bi. Okay? He was bi. It, it's, he was bi. Yeah, but it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't, I, I don't care about this, period. It's just, no. I don't, it's, it's not a movie made for me. I, I mean, uh, we've seen, I've seen the trailer with my mom when we went to go see Ocean's Eight, mm -hmm. and she was she was kind of excited about that because that it, it's also just not my generation. It's mm -hmm. not but it's not my type of music, and so she was kind of she looked like she was interested in that, and, and she was kind of uh, she was happy with how the actors looked, you know, mm -hmm. and all that. But that I personally, I just don't care. So let's switch over to Suspiria. Yeah, I haven't seen the original. I hear yeah, it's either. I hear it's creepy. I think I've seen like one scene in in film class, like with Bob Vaya or something. I don't know, but uh, this is, you know, it looks creepy. <laughs> it does. It does look creepy. I'm not even a hundred percent sure what's going on there. No, it looks no. like something about selling your soul through dance, yes. which is creepy as hell. There, there's a line in the trailer that talks about. Um, when when you choose to dance someone else's choreography, basically you're emoting a part of their themselves, yeah. like their soul, kind of. Yeah. So it's almost it's almost hinting at this, like, yeah, either you're trading your soul or you're playing host to another soul through the piece that you're dancing. Which, as a former dancer, I get like that yeah. that resonates and that jives. I'm just not. 100% sure what the end game is on that? No, no, I mean, I mean, I don't know what the original is about, and to me it looks like it's actually a remake that kind of does its own thing in some, in certain points. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't, I mean, visually it doesn't look like the original, it seems like they changed some of the setting, I mean, there's this, there's this creepy old man, it takes place in Berlin too, or at least yeah. partially in Berlin, so it, uh, <laughs> they do some, they do some interesting stuff, because it, one of the first scenes it's like, it, it shows an English sign in German sign. I was like, what's this? <laughs> and then I was, oh, because I haven't seen anything of the sphere. I know some yeah, I friends. I know some friends who are excited about that movie. It, it just, I'm not, because it's just not really, the type of horror is not really my thing. But it could be good, you know, D Dakota Johnson looks really, uh, looks really uh, engaged in, in Yeah, in she does. I didn't recognize her actually until, she looks like, like, a few times, a few yeah. times she'd been on screen. I was like, oh, I think I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then, then, then Tilda Swint does in this too. Oh yes, I that's mean, almost she, that's almost instant creepy because she's so good. She's always she's a win, so pretty much. Good. I've yet to see her in a in a performance, even like in a movie where 
that was actually objectively a bad movie. I'm not sure. I mean, well, Constantine. Uh, yeah, Constantine comes close. Okay, <laughs> I give you it, but Wait, she was great in that. She was fantastic. <laughs> the movie. Oh, no, no, the movie's oh, not. The movie's oh, not honey, good. Uh, oh, but, honey, no. But yeah, no. Tilda Swinton is almost always a win just by herself. She's pretty so. much. She's the only reason you should watch Constantine. Actually, she, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Did, don't. I mean, I, I know you Keanu fans are out there, and I, I adore many of you, but he's. He's not worth it. He's not no, no. He's not worth now, it. now he is worth it watching movies again with a John Wick. I'm so, I'm so sad. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure there's not, not yet a John Wick trail out. The first photo they published. Oh, it's the John horse. Wick riding a horse, like shooting at a motor, uh, uh, one, one guy on a motorcycle. I was like, this is instant win. Like I that is instant jumping the shark is what that no, is. No, no, it's not. No, no, it's, no that movie jumped its it's the first fucking movie John was Wick. jumping the shark. Just because you killed my killing dog. Spirit. No, this is not jumping the shark. This is fucking justified in this universe and how they built this universe and how they expand on it in the second one. This incredible. We're talking about the John Wick universe now. Yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's just this incredible universe this is world building in terms of this is really I'm, I'm not shitting you this is like john wick is world building assassination stuff it's absolutely brilliant how they do it what's cracking me up is this assertion that john wick has succeeded at this where the born movies have failed yes because the born movies failed so hard and i know why they did it's because they took it out of the time period that the books were actually written to be set in but uh. And it's directed, most of them are directed by Paul, Paul Greengrass. Well, so, yeah. there's, there's that too, but oh my god, jo jo no. John Wick has worked, okay. But yeah, this is, John Wick is just, I really like those first two movies, and if they continue with that type of stuff, because the setup of the second one was kind of like, they know how the second one ended, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm totally down for oh what god. happens next. Like, oh I god. I enjoyed the hell out of those movies. It's I just gonna kill everyone. Everybody. There will be no the one left in the world the whole but John city now. Wick. He's gonna kill because it looks like from the end of the same movie, it's like everybody is a freaking assassin. <laughs> everybody in the world. Everyone in the world. Well, I mean, I've I've written weirder head cannons for other things, I guess. But this is just like I love this word building we do in that. Oh just my God. amazing. Like I can't wait for that. Really, really yeah. excited. I think that's coming out next year, maybe. I think so. Not quite sure, because it's too late now to advertise it. Yeah, I think for so. For this year, yeah, so. But that's it pretty much for trailers and our opinion on John Wick, I guess. <laughs> yeah. The so rule is kind of all over the place, but we said the most important thing. But I think that's it for trailers, right? We didn't yeah, really, we really didn't we, get anything else. We didn't get, like, raunchy comedy or anything. No, which, I mean, if you had put that at the front of this movie, it, wouldn't, it would not have made sense. I this don't know. Was, like, this was not the audience for, like, raunchy comedy. There was one... I'm, I'm feeling like we're forgetting something. There was something in the very, very front matter during the, um, the like, stock previews that kind of go ahead of all the films, like commercials, basically, like literal commercials. There was something with Chris Pine in it, and I, hey, we walked I in, I think, of. a little a little off of where you'd actually find out what that is. Yeah, I was I just I was just coming into that like during the last few. Yeah, and I don't I don't remember what it was, but no. it was Chris Pine with a beard, and it was some kind of white collar crime thing. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, oh we had, we had the Steve McQueen one. That's what I was. Widows. Was Widows. Yeah. We had that. Um, which that was the one I was thinking of uh, with Viola Davis and. Yes. Liam, Liam oh Lisa's no, that. That's a ton of oh, I'm glad you reminded me of that one because that one does look like legitimate fun. It does, to me, it doesn't look like fun. It looks like it looks like a thriller, you know. It looks yeah. like a very serious thriller. To me, it look it looks to me, actually to me. My, my definition of fun is a little warped. Okay, to me, it looks like R-rated Ocean's Eight. <laughs> I, that, I, that's what it looks like. It actually is, except this would be R-rated Ocean's Four. Basically, you have four um, mob widows, is what it looks like. Yeah. Um, who are pulling off one of their.